Well, hello there! I hope you're having an amazing day and that you're feeling excited about finding out what these extensions that we installed in the previous video actually do for us in real life. So, let's get right into it! Okay, so due to the nature of this video and the fact that we are going to cover the practical aspect, I do not see much value for us to sit right here and just chat. That was like our main story of the previous video. So here we are going to get our hands dirty and do some actual real life work. So we are heading right into Visual Studio Code! Welcome to our Visual Studio Code environment! In this video I think we are going to spend quite a lot of time here. So let's get right into it! Okay, the first thing that we need to do right now is to get some code that we can actually work with. <laughs> and you should not pay any attention to the actual code base you are going to be looking at right now because this is just an example. This project right here is the first project that was covered inside of the official Rust book. I included it here just so we could test our extensions, nothing more than that. So please do not pay any attention and do not trouble yourself with the fact that you still are not familiar with the whole syntax of the language or the organization and stuff like that. The only thing right now you should pay close attention to are the actual differences and benefits that are provided to us by the extensions. So, let's get right into it. Okay, here is our code. And now I want to show you that all of my extensions are turned off. And when we know that our extensions are turned off, I think it's a great moment to discuss what Visual Studio Code is actually going to provide us with. As you can see, the code is already highlighted, the syntax highlight, is available to us in Visual Studio Code by default. That is because of the fact that Visual Studio Code already contains some core understanding about Rust programming language and when it sees the RS extension for our file that we are currently working with, it knows that it is going to expect Rust code inside of it. And that is why it highlights it exactly as Rust's code should be highlighted. So this is a nice start, but yeah, that's basically all we are going to be provided from the Visual Studio Code side. Everything else is basically not available. No auto-suggest, for example, and that's a very essential feature. So let me show you that auto-complete and auto-suggest actually do not work. And to do that, I'm going to comment out some random line in our code and try to type it again, so to just repeat it, to duplicate it. And you can basically see that we have some autocomplete here. You can see the exactly same name as it was before. But does it mean that I lied to you when I said that we do not have autocomplete in Visual Studio Code without any extensions? Well, no, I did not lie. This is Visual Studio Code's core feature. It is going to read the entire file we are looking at and find any instances that look like the code that we started typing. To prove you that I'm not lying, I'm going to remove all the instances of this particular name and then I'm going to start typing it again. So I have removed all of them and when I start typing now, we get nothing. We do not have autocomplete now because we do not have a single instance of this variable in our code. So Visual Studio Code cannot do its thing and cannot be smart for us to make our life easier. But that was autocomplete, that was a very basic functionality. I want to show you that autosuggestion and actually recommending some methods of some object or type is not available to us. And to do that, I can see our read line method right here, which looks very tempting, I have to say. So let me remove it and then press control space. Control space is supposed to show us all the available methods that are available for the type we are working with. And in this case, it's our IO library. So when I press control space, we get nothing. 
That is because Visual Studio Code cannot actually figure out what is happening in the code we are working with. It does not understand what are the available options and methods that we have here. So yeah, we are on our own basically. Yeah, but let me show you what should work right now. Do you remember the last step, the last tip that I gave you in the previous video? The one about auto-formatting that Visual Studio Code does for us every time we save the file. That should work right now, right? Let's test it out. So, I'm going to demolish this part right here. I'm going to make it look very retarded and bad. And when I press Ctrl S, which is supposed to save the file, ta-da! Huh? It does not seem to be working, but why is that? I mean, that, that was set in Visual Studio Code setup menu. It's not in our extensions. It's in Visual Studio Code, right? Well, that is because Visual Studio Code kinda needs Rust Analyzer to be able to actually know what are the practices and rules that it should follow when it's actually formatting the code. So, auto-formatting does not work at the moment. Okay, now I feel like it's the right moment to enable our Rust Analyzer and show you how it all works. To do that, we're just going to enable this extension and go right back to our main function. And when we get back here, we can immediately see some differences. I think you can notice that we are getting some inferred types right here. Oops, excuse my French, but uh, inferred types are these little types here that are suggested by the compiler. I think you remember that we did not have them previously before we enabled Rust Analyzer, right? If you do not trust me, you can just scroll back a few seconds and you can see for yourself that we did not have this. So the first thing we are going to test with our Rust Analyzer on is the fact that our formatting is going to work automatically every time we save a file. And to prove you that, I'm going to just, again, demolish our code. I'm going to delete this new line, I'm going to add another new line here, which is completely meaningless, and let's see what happens when I press Ctrl S. And it seems to be working! Great success! So, it seems to be doing its job well now. As I told you, it is going to know how to actually format the code and what rules to follow when doing so. So, we got our formatting right. Now, I feel it's an amazing moment to talk about auto-suggest and to see if our read line is going to actually work now. I am going to repeat exactly the same process as we did last time, so before the extension was enabled. I am going to remove the read line method and I'm going to press control space and as you can see we actually do we are getting quite a few methods that are available to us and read line is one of them so we can select it yep that's it so right now that our hearts are getting warmed up for the read line method let's see another functionality that is provided by rust analyzer to us and that is go to implementation functionality. When I press control key and I click the read line method, I'm taken directly. So my Visual Studio code jumps directly to the implementation of this method. Even though we did not write this method, this method is a part of standard library. We are not the ones who made it. We are not the ones who created this piece of code right here. So as you can see, we are taken right to the part where this method is implemented. This code might look like a bunch of weird, unknown, undescribable code that is completely fine right now of course because we do not know all of this stuff but trust me this code knows how to read your command line instructions so of course this feature works perfectly fine with our own implementations and it is going to jump through our own definitions of functions and calls and stuff like that so let me show you that as well we are going back to our main function and inside of it we can see that we are calling a couple of functions. I am going to press my control key 
and click on the first one. And as you can see, we are taken to its implementation right here, but it's not much of a jump. So let me show you again by clicking on the second function from our main function. And when I do that, I'm being transferred all the way down to the bottom of the file because that is where this function was created. That was awesome! We managed to prove that Rust Analyzer does a bunch of stuff for us. So right now, I feel like it's a great moment to continue our discussion about some other extensions. Are you ready? Okay, in the previous video, the second extension that we mentioned was called LLDB. And that one was basically going to give us support to debug our code. And this one I'm not going to cover in practice. That is because I feel like it's not going to be as beneficial as much as it's going to be confusing to you right now. Because in order to debug our code, we need to understand what is happening inside of that code. I'm going to talk about this extension in practice, do not worry about it, but we are going to do it in one of our future videos where we are going to write the actual code. And when you're going to have enough of an understanding to be able to actually know what to expect from certain instructions. Please forgive me for not including it here, but you will be covered eventually. Okay, our next extension is going to be Better Tamil. Let me show you that this extension is disabled at the moment. And when we have concluded that it is disabled, we can jump right into Cargo Tamil file. We can see a bunch of stuff inside of it, but it's white, it's plain, nothing is highlighted, everything looks very simple. So let us jump right back to our better Tamil extension and enable it. And as soon as we have done that, we can jump right back to cargo Tamil file. And when we do that, we can see that everything is looking much more colorful and easier to look at. Of course. It has a lot of other benefits which are of much more practical nature. But yeah, let's say that it's just the colorful nature that makes us feel amazing right now. Of course, we do not have to spend too much time here because this is a very simple stuff. It is going to give us some suggestions as well. But yeah, we do not have to spend too much time here. Okay, now we can head back to our main function. And let me show you that our error lens extension is disabled at the moment. And as you can see, it is. Okay, let me enable error lens. And when I did this, let's jump right back into our main RS file. And now we do get some warning. This was not here before, right? You remember. Okay, and let me try breaking the code a bit. And when I do that, you can see that we're getting actual red error messages right now. Not just orange warning text, we get errors as well. And we are getting all kinds of errors. I can do different things and I'll get different messages based on that. Of course, as I already mentioned in the previous video, you should consider error lens yourself. Because if you think about it, if I break a ton of lines in many different places, we'll get a whole bunch of error and warning messages. And that looks just weird and too confusing to be actually useful. So basically, error lens just gives us error and warning messages in real time without the need to actually build the project. And finally, we managed to reach our final extension. And this one is very smart. I'm talking about the tab 9 extension. So this one is, if you remember from the previous video, AI powered autocomplete and auto suggestion tool. And now to prove to you that nothing smart is happening in our code right now, I'm going to head to some random place in our code and I'm going to start creating a new variable. And when I start typing, we basically get nothing. And now let me turn on tab 9. Let's go to extensions and enable it. Now head back right to our code and try repeating the same process. Let's do exactly the same stuff. Aha, we get something different. We are having some grayish text here that looks like the completion of our variable creation process. So, if I press tab key, this is going to be written for us. What is happening behind the scenes is tab 9 is going to track all the instructions that we are writing and it's going to remember what are the most commonly used instructions and what are the most common ways that we use to write some pieces of code 
And when we start writing that, it's going to figure out what might be the best suggestion for you at the moment based on your previous uses. And that can help you out a lot and make our lives much easier and our coding experience much more enjoyable. So we managed to cover all the extensions, except the code LLDB, but more on that later. Finally, it's time for me to actually get on stage. This video was all about Visual Studio Code and everything in practice and stuff like that. And I have to say, I feel a bit jealous. I feel a bit left out. That is why I decided to end the video here. That was enough Visual Studio Code experience. Now, joking aside, I hope that you learned a bunch of new stuff and that you actually understand what are the practical benefits of using the Visual Studio Code extensions that we talked about in previous video, but this time in real life. So, right now, we are going to talk about what we are going to cover in the next video. In our next video, we are going to talk about the whole process of installing Rust. Because, I mean, if you do not install Rust, and you have Visual Studio Code environment with all the extensions and all the add-ons we have installed, they're kind of meaningless if you think about it without the main star of the show, which is Rust. I think that can be compared to basically going to a stand-up comedy show and the main star or our like comedian is not on stage but just the janitor is there and he's cleaning up and he's like doing it for two hours and in the end you get out and you're like what did I spend my money on? No, that would be a very disappointing show I have to say. So yeah, working with Rust without the Rust installed is something like that. So, have an amazing day and goodbye.